So that this video was a little more organized, I've grouped the fixes into different categories, and our first one is fixing mistakes using pens. Starting with what is probably the most common fix for mistakes on paper, whiteout or correction fluid. Although you can use fluid whiteout pens, a lot of people do prefer to instead use correction tape, just as it's already dry, meaning you can instantly write over it and continue with your planning. An issue with this fix though is that a lot of the time, the colour of any pen you use over the top of the whiteout won't be exactly the same as the colour of the pen just using it directly onto the paper. Also, this fix is obviously going to be limited to working on white paper, so if you're using blackout pages, craft pages, or any other colour, or even white paper that isn't a true white, your fix might just be a little bit noticeable. You could argue though that white out for black paper is just a sharpie, but even then if your blacks don't match, your fix might still show up. Similar to white out, you can also use a white gel pen to go over smaller mistakes. This is my mistake fix of choice most of the time, just as I can be a little more controlled about where the white pen actually ends up. Depending on how opaque your white pen is, you might need to go over the same spot a couple of times. I also find that, similar to whiteout, writing over the top of this can sometimes look a little messy. What I instead try to do with any mistakes, misspelt words in particular, is just writing over the mistakes with what I actually wanted to put there, using the same coloured pen that I was originally using, and then I go over any lines or areas that I want hidden with the white pen. This means that the ink that is left still visible will be the correct colour. You can also do the complete opposite of whiting things out, and that's going over it with a black pen. As part of this, you'd just make a box or shape around the mistake, colour that in with your pen, and then write over the top of it with any opaque pen. Most people prefer to use a white gel pen, but you could of course use any other colour of gel pen, or even paint pens. This brings us to the next fix, which is using paint pens to go over your mistake. You can use white or black, similar to the last few fixes, or you can choose a completely different colour. Again, depending on what colour you choose, and the type of paint pen you're using, you may have to go over the mistake a couple of times just to make sure it isn't visible. Sometimes when you're outlining something, your hand can get a little bit shaky and your line work doesn't really end up looking the neatest. A fix for this is to make your line work thicker, either by going over it with a thicker pen in general, or by using a thinner pen to carefully smooth out any odd looking places. This is another fix for shaky lines, but by using a drop shadow, you can essentially create an illusion of smoothness. Depending on what colour drop shadow you're using, you can also use the tip from before by making the shaky line thicker and then incorporating it into the drop shadow. Another one for Team Shaky Lines, another fix is to essentially embrace the shakiness just by adding a couple more lines around whatever you were trying to outline. This can give your journal kind of a cute scribbly look if done right. Our next section are fixes that involve sticking things over mistakes. And the first fix in this category is to stick over the mistake with paper. To ensure that you get an exact match for the colour of the paper you're using, I recommend taking a piece from the back of your journal and using that to stick over the mistake. If you have an Archer and Olive journal, you can also use their notepads, which are sized to the journals as well, meaning that if you make a full page mistake, you can easily just take a piece of the notepad and stick that over the full page. Their Neapolitan page is also good if you're using different colours of paper, or if you want to stick paper on top that isn't the same as your journal. This brings us to our next fix, which is using paper in a colour other than what's in your journal. This can be helpful for when the paper in your journal is thin, in such a way that you might be able to see the mistake if you just stuck journal paper over it. But it also gives you a way of turning your mistake fixing into adding a decorative element to the page. Of course, we have to mention stickers when thinking about mistakes that feature sticking. It's kind of in the name. These can be decorative stickers, or just blocks of colour that you can then write over the top of. Similar to this, you can also use sticky notes or post-its. These come in a range of colours, sizes and designs, so there are certainly more options than just neon boxes of colour. 
a lot of stationery stores sell some really cute decorative post-its, which can either be used as headers or just little decorative elements. You can also use washi tape to stick over the top of mistakes. Depending on what type of washi and what type of pens you're using, you can then also sometimes write or draw over the top of this. As some washi tapes are quite thin, it can sometimes be good to white out over your mistake first, just so that it doesn't then show through the washi tape. Our next section is all about big mistakes, or really when you just want to completely write off a page. And the first tip for this section is just to fully stick something over the page. Pretty much anything from the last category would work here, but some good options in particular are things like full page quotes, colouring pages, or printables. As a shameless self promo, I do have a range of monthly tracker printables available on my Patreon, so if that's of interest to you, do make sure to check those out. If you make a large mistake on the left hand side of a spread, one way to cover this is by sticking the pages together. I recommend using something like double sided tape for this rather than glue, just because we don't want our pages to warp from any glue wetness. What you could also do instead of fully sticking the pages together is just stick the long edges together with washi tape. If you make a large mistake on the right hand of a spread though, sticking pages together means that you'll lose whatever is on the left. In this case it could be more helpful to just cut the page out instead. Be careful when doing this though to make sure you don't cut so close to the middle of your journal that you cause any other pages to fall out. What you can do if you're a little bit worried about this is cut enough of the page away such that you're only leaving a small section along the spine that can be secured down using washi tape. Our next section only contains the one tip because it didn't really fit anywhere else, but you can of course turn your mistake into something else. This one won't work for every mistake, but for instance, say you've written out a title and you didn't really like the way it looked. What you could then try and do is incorporate it into a doodle instead. The next category is a little different, as it's not really about fixing the mistake, but our first quote fix for this is just to make fun of the mistake. Being able to laugh at yourself is a good skill to have, and sometimes, if the mistake isn't anything too major, you can just make fun of it. This is something that I did for April last year, where I was kind of on autopilot when writing out my header for the first day of the month, only to then realise that it wasn't actually going to be Monday. Thankfully it was April Fools, so I could just cross it out and make a little fun of it. A similar thing happened in November last year, where I wrote 2019 rather than 2020, and also in my current journal where I wrote meal plan instead of the header for my 101 things items. Outside of poking fun though, you can also just leave the mistake be. Sometimes trying to fix a mistake just draws more attention to it. A lot of the time, when I make a spelling error when writing in my tasks and events, I just leave it there. I know what I meant, and given that my bullet journal is here to help me organise myself, as long as I know what I meant, that's really all that matters. So this is how we can fix our mistakes, but what can we do to avoid making them to start with? Well, mistakes are always going to happen, it's kind of unrealistic to assume we can avoid them altogether, but there are of course some things we can do to make them happen much less frequently. My first tip for this is to use pencil first. You don't have to fully pencil in layouts, that can often end up being quite time consuming, but adding in some rough guidelines can be really helpful to make sure things are in the right place, they're the right size, they're spelled correctly, etc. My second tip is to check before you commit to the pen. Are you working on the right page? Is your journal the right way up? Is it actually 2020 or is it 2021? It might sound a little silly, but these are mistakes that are more common than you might think. Checking that you have these things and many other things right before you put pen to paper can just help to make mistakes less common. Take your time. <laughs> The biggest mistakes I ever make in my journal are when I'm in a rush. Or when I try and freehand a circle, that's pretty much always a disaster. When I'm hurrying through my setups though, this is when I'm most likely to misspell things, put them in the wrong place, draw them out in ways that look odd, etc. Another tip is to use erasable tools. 
pencils and erasable pens can make the occurrence of mistakes much less of a problem because you can just erase them and try again. One thing to note about erasable pens though is that most of them work with the heat generated from friction to be erased. But any heat will typically work. If you're somewhere that hot weather is common, or like to leave your journal in hot places, that can be an issue. Question of the day for you guys though, what is your most used way of fixing mistakes in your journal? And yes, just not fixing them does count. <laughs>